Today, I'm going to be reading Chapter 10 of Ground Zero by Alan Gratz. This chapter is titled, J for Jahid. Rashmita paused at the top of, the, of a ridge look, to look out at the mountains that swept up through Afghanistan and in into China. The enormous mountains always humbled her. It was easy to see only the village you lived in and not wider than the world if you never stopped to look up. What Rashmina didn't see anywhere was Pasoon. It wasn't hard to hide out in these mount mountains. That was why the Taliban were so difficult to find and fight. Basoon had to be out there, just over the next hill, just beyond the next valley. But where exactly was Basoon going? Rashmina started walking again as she considered the question. It wasn't like the Taliban had a village or a camp or ba a base. They roamed the barren mountains and passes between he here and Pakistan, slipping back and forth over the unguarded, unmarked border, like they owned the place. Rashmina could, er, Rashmina, sorry, Basoon could be headed in the, that general direction, like Rashmina was. But how could he be sure he would find them? Suddenly, Rashmina remembered another time when she had followed her brother up into these mountains. What was it, a year ago, two? Basoon had invited Rashmina to go exploring in the mountains, and Rashmina had been thrilled to skip out on her chores and go with him. Basoon had picked up a stick along the way and was swinging it like a sword. Rashmina strolled beside him, naming things in English, rock, tree, sun, brother. Rashmina couldn't remember a day so fine, a time she was so happy. They passed a big rock with, Pakist with a Pakistan phone number painted on it, a recruitment sign for anyone who wanted to, c to call and join the Taliban. And Shiwu and Pasoon followed the goat path up and around the mountain higher and higher. At last, they came to a flat space at the top of a step, of a, top of a steep cliff. And there, leaning against a rock, was an old wooden rifle. Rasmina gasped. The, ra the, ra the rifle was scarred and dented from years of fighting, but it still looked usable. Pasoon went right to it, like he'd always known it would, like he'd always known it would be there. It was, a, it was heavy for him, but Rashmina knew he had used a rifle before to hunt cranes and quail with Baba. She watched, her, she watched as her brother slid the bolt back to see if the rifle was loaded. There were two cartridges of bullets on the, on the ground, and Pasoon loaded them into the top of the rifle and slid the bolt back in, in place. Pasoon, what are you doing? Rashmina asked, suddenly alarmed. That's not yours. No, it's the Taliban's, Pasoon said. Darwesh and Aman said they'd give up me five five American dollars to shoot at an American camp. Rashmina felt the blood drain from her face. Now she understood. Basud hadn't stumbled on this rifle by accident. He hadn't invited her along to go exploring. He'd known exactly where he was going and what he was doing to what he was going to do when he got there. Legs shaking, Rashmina inched forward to look over the side of the mountain. Across the valley sat a ragtag collection of plywood and plastic tarps clinging to a small flat space that had once been a logging camp. It was a small American base, deliberately planted in the heart of the Taliban territory to invite them to attack it. Basoon took aim with the rifle, meaning to do exactly that. Rashmina grabbed the stock of the rifle and tried to pull it away from her brother. Basoon, you can't. They have guns here. Big guns. They'll kill you. They're, they'll kill both of us. Basoon frowned and yanked the rifle away from her. They won't even know where I am, he told them. Besides, I'm not going to hit. I'm not going to hit anything. Darwesh and Aman told me that I have to do is shoot at them. Then they'll jump around like angry monkeys shooting off their expensive bombs at nothing. They'll be at it for hours, but by then we'll be long gone. But why, Rashmita has said. Why not leave them alone? That scowl that would eventually cloud Pasoon's face every day when he was older set in, and his voice turned sour. We'll leave them alone when they leave us alone. Pasoon steadied the rifle against a rock and took aim, and Rashmita backed away. Why had her brother brought her along for this, to watch, to cheer him on? He had to know she wouldn't do that. Besides, he was scared, possibly. Or maybe he had brought her along just so a single boy walking alone in the mountains wouldn't look so suspicious. Pow! The rifle clicked when Pasoon fired it. 
knocking him to the ground. Rashmina covered her ears. Bassoon quickly scrambled to the rock and hid behind it, not daring to peek out to see what his shot had done. In seconds, Rashmina heard the shouts of Americans and then the tuck, 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 tuck of their guns as they fired back. She ducked low, but Bassoon was right. Their bullets didn't come anywhere close to them. The Americans had no idea where the shooter was. Bassoon giggled behind the rock. I'll just wait here until they think I've gone and then shoot at them again. Bassoon, this isn't a game, Rashmina cried. But Bassoon wasn't listening to her anymore. He was having too much fun, feeling all grown up and important. And that's what he was and that's what he's doing now, Rashmina realized. Coming back to the present, the Taliban would tell Bassoon what what he wanted to hear, that he was old enough to make his own decisions. Old enough to join them and fight the Americans. That's why Bassoon would go back up to the ridge with the phone number and the gun. Back back to the heart of the Taliban country, Rashmina hurried down the goat hills and in, into the valley. The bottom of the hill, young boys from her village played on an old abandoned Soviet tank. The Kaka green tank treads were broken and, and it sat tilted. Half buried in the dirt, faded black scorch marks still show where the Mohugin and the Afghan guerrilla fighters had hit the armored vehicles with rockets more than 30 years ago. The boys lined up along one side of the tank's cannon and pushed it, turning, turning the turret uphill, uphill against the gravity, against gravity. When the turret was as far as they could push it, they hopped on the top of the long cannon and rode it as, a, as it swung back down. The boys whooped as the heavy tur turret gathered speed and then clang, it hit the bottom of its arc and threw them all into the dirt. Then the boys crackled with delight and got up to do it all over again. Did you boys know my brother Pasoon? Rashmina called to them. Did he come by here recently? Yes, one of the boys told her. He grunted as he, grunted as he and his friends leaned into the turret. And he wouldn't help us, and he wouldn't help us push the gun. Rashmina sighed. So Pasoon had come this way, and there was nothing else in this direction except the Taliban. The voice squealed as the Soviet tank changed ra ch ride, cha clanged, and threw them off again. And Rashmina climbed the next hill. Away from the river, Kunar province was a dusty and brown, the ground rocky and hard. The few plants were scratchy and dry. Rashmina spied a boy herding his goats up on a, up a mountain in the distance and wondered if they had found anything better to eat. She doubted it. That should be Pasoon up there. Rashmina thought a young boy lopping around, so, uh, lopping along, singing a song to his goats as they climbed into the mountains, not running off to join the Taliban and fight a war that had begun a decade before he was born. Rashmina stopped to catch her breath, stepping up onto a boulder and loosening her headscarf to let in more air. She had begun to lose her twin brother in school. Their first textbooks, the ones they had used to learn the letters in Peshatu, Peshitu, were old anti-Soviet primers printed by the United States and smuggled them from Pakistan. The books taught the alphabet, but they also taught the children of Afghanistan, Afghanistan to fight back against the Soviet captors. Rashmina could still remember some of the lessons. K is for Kapul, the capital of our dear country. The primer said, no one can invite our country. Only Muslim Afghans can rule over this country. J is for Jihad. Jihad is the kind of war that Muslims fight in in the name of God to free Muslims and Muslim and Muslim lands from the enemies of Islam. It in, it, if infindals invade, Jihad is ob, 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 obligation to of every Muslim. T is for Tapuk, Tapak was the Pasuto word for gun. My uncle has a gun. He does jihad with the gun. Another picture book followed, the adventures of two boys named Makbul and Bashir, who eventually helped the Mudunir, the Mujan Hindir clean and carry their weapons before an attack on the Soviet army. Even their math textbooks encouraged them to fight. A Kashi Nu bullet travels at 800 meters per second. A Majuhid has the forehead of a Russian in his sights 3,200 3, meters away. How many seconds will it take the bullet to hit the Russian? Rashmina knew that what Americans had made those textbooks in order to hurt their enemy at the time, the Soviet Union. 
What the United States hadn't expected was they themselves would one day invade Af Afghanistan. Now the Americans were in vitals. They had trained the mutineer to fight. Rashmina had managed to ignore the calls to, to war in ta their textbooks and use the books to learn their letters and numbers instead. But the pictures of tanks and planes and guns had been far more interesting to Pasoon. And it didn't help when boys like Darwish and Amman kept coming back to tell him how great things were in the Taliban. When Hila had been killed in the airstrike two years ago, the Rashmina had brought a wounded American soldier into their home. And now Pasoon was gone. Useless. Unless she would catch him. Rashmina squinted into the bright sun and thought she saw movement on a ridge across the valley. She put a hand up to block the sun. Yes, it was Pasoon. She would recognize that round head and those skinny legs anywhere. Rashmina's heart leaped. She still loved her twin brother, even even if she wanted to punch him in the face. Pasoon was waving his arms like he was trying to get her attention, and she called out to him. The tiny figure step, stopped waving and turned. Rashmina saw now that what her brother had been waiting, waving to her all, all at all. But someone up on the next ridge, she scanned the top of the hill. There among the rocks, she saw shapes of four men silhouetted against the light. Four men wearing baggy pants and turbans and carrying more rifles. Rashmina was too late. Hassoon had found the Taliban. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.